Going to kick off part number three of the MEP 1040 rebuild. All right, I just wanted to splice this in at the very beginning and kind of prefix the whole video and all the repairs and everything went good, but um, it ended up not going as planned. And uh, I don't know if I killed the generator or if I found the underlying problem to it, but uh, stay tuned to find out what it is. Took a little bit, but I got some parts in and I'm not thinking the repair part of this video is gonna be that long. Going to replace this radiator that has the hole in it. And I had mentioned previously, you can see after I cleaned it last time, well, maybe you can't, because of course I don't have a light over here, but you can see it's all slimy again. What it is, is there's a fuel return line. It's much more obvious now that everything's been cleaned up, but this fuel return line it's way more obvious in person, the video doesn't pick it up, but once it's pressurized and the, the, the fuels return into the tank, it's seeping through the braided covering. So that means that there's probably something broke in the stainless underside. Um, it can run, obviously. You've seen it run with that leak. So that needs to be replaced. It doesn't have to be a hydraulic line. So what I might end up doing to just kind of complete the project is just make one so that way it's not leaking fuel and then I'll have the hydraulic line out and I could bring it to a place and have a hydraulic line made because it's nice to have it as a hydraulic line uh, proper and then I'll just do a double check and put any missing screws for the body and things and then close up all the panels and stuff like that this doesn't look terribly complicated to get out there are some bolts so here and here's like two that hold these brackets on and then obviously the hoses once you get the hoses off lift it out and then these look like these rubber grommets i'm assuming it just kind of like pops into place somewhere but after i get it all out and replaced i'll come back and kind of give you my notes radiator is in pretty simple a little wet down there I uh, didn't realize it when I was filling obviously because there's no hole in the radiator it was just taking the fluid really slow and over flowed it and it spilled down very easy to replace this radiator uh, probably the most annoying thing is dealing with the big hose clamp down there and the little bit of mess that it made like I said earlier it's it's pretty self-explanatory uh, this one is multiple pieces. In order for it to get apart without really arguing with it, you gotta take those two bolts out right there, eight millimeter. Same with the ones on the bulkhead over there, eight millimeter, and then it's 10 millimeter out here. There's some rubber grommets that sit at the bottom. And there's like a rubber horseshoe one right here. These are a little deteriorated, but they're, they're gonna serve their purpose fine. It's still a little wet down there. I tried to sop it all up. I'm hoping what it is, is it's just kind of sitting and seeping out and there is not a leak at the bottom of this thing. We'll see. So I'm going to move on to the fuel line piece now. I got the wrench on the fitting on this end of what I think it is, the return line. And then over here, um, getting at the wrench fitting is going to be impossible. So I'm going to have to unbolt the fuel filter and then loosely get at that. And then I'm going to go through my, uh, fuel fitting pieces and see what I got for line and everything like that and make something up. And then after I finished installing that line, I'm gonna immediately move into just putting all of the body back together because if I so choose, I left the socket on there. To replace that with a hydraulic line, I'll be able to access it just by taking this cover off here and getting at it from over there. Um, it, it, it'll be easy to get at, I'm not too concerned about it. We 
cleaned it off and letting it run up to that operating temperature just about there once it gets up to the operating temperature while it's cooling down I'm gonna put all the body panels back on so that way it's all put back together and I will double check the coolant level and stuff like that and then I'll hook up the leads and it's gonna be time to do the load test on it All right, and the next day, everything is put completely back together on this thing, and I'm turning the breakers and the power and everything back on. You can see over there, I have the generator hooked up to ground, and I have my load bank set up using the old radiator I took out. It's just a platform for that. Then I have my other distribution block over there. Um, external fuel is hooked up. The line is running all the way. I have my other generator trailer in the garage, but that's where it's gonna feed some external fuel from. Gonna wake it up here, let it prime up. So it's ready to crank. Prime and raw auxiliary fuel, and it's gonna go through its idle up, and I'm gonna let it warm up a little bit. So why it's going through its idle up and just warming up a little bit, um, I'm gonna go through the same procedure that I showed in my load banking video. It's gonna be for six hours, and then once it's up to temperature, I'm gonna go through five minute intervals of going through. If you didn't watch that video, there's a link down in the description to it, and it's gotta make it through its six hours. I'm not really gonna show the whole thing. We'll just check in at times, watching through, uh, adding on the loads and stuff like that and watch how it ramps up and stuff. All right, so I gave it like five minutes or so to warm up. So I'm gonna close the AC circuit. We're putting power out. Then I'm gonna cycle up. So since this one really hasn't been run under any load, I did like a quick test on these 5,000 watt heaters. I'm gonna do 3,000 watts, then 5,000 watts on each one. So, here's 3,000. And then I'm gonna give it five minutes a piece. You can see, it says exactly, 3KW. It didn't actually seem to have a problem, so I'm gonna move it right to five. When you move it to the five on that electric heater, it takes a little bit to go from the three to the five. But we'll just keep stepping it up and it's holding at 60 hertz, no problem. There it goes. All right. Come back when we go up to the next jump. It's been five minutes, I'm gonna do the next step up. I'm just gonna go straight to 5,000 on this. So it's the same deal where it takes a little bit for the heater to actually ramp up. There it goes. All right, and she's rolling some coal now. Not a whole lot, but that's what we want. We want it to, I don't know how much you could see it, if any, in the video, but it's pushing out some soot. And that's what we want because it probably hasn't run this hard in a while. In three more minutes, we'll spool it up a little bit higher. And I'm curious to see on these ones how much it's actually rated to allow it to go like over its rated capacity. Cause it may like over amp or something trip out. I don't know, it's part of the test. So we'll see. One thing I wanted to point out, uh, the auxiliary fan here kicked in, which is good. It's up at about 208 degrees right now. 
because if you remember, I wasn't able to check without the load on. This actually drew a little bit of coolant down in the bottle. And nothing's come out the coolant overflow. We just hit our five minutes. What I'm gonna do is add another load on, another 1500 watts. So it's maxed out. So we'll see, I'll give it another five minutes and we'll see if we can keep pulling power or we'll see if it gives a trip out error. The coolant actually came down a little bit since that fan kicked in. It's at 203 now instead of 208. So the coolant system is doing what it's supposed to. And our ambient temperature right now, I don't know if, can you see it? It's 84 degrees and it's only gonna get hotter during this test. All right, I'm splicing this in really quick because I don't know what happened to the clip. I don't know if I lost it, erased it, didn't record it or whatever. As we were loading the generator up, I wanted to point out the heat gun, which is like 1300 watts, ended up running it off the convenience receptacle, which is under here. Unlike the older generators, you can actually pull 15 amps like your regular house uh, outlet off of the convenience receptacle. And it's tied into leg one, like I found out at the beginning. So it worked out well moving it instead of using that uh, like junction box, big yellow thing that I have. Uh, it, it loaded the two legs more evenly to run it off this and it was more than capable. So you'll see in the clip after this where it's kind of sitting over on the radiator that was over here as I'm doing the load test. And you'll see that it brought it up to like 12 kW, which is equal to the load bank video. But Somehow the clip got lost and I just wanted to include this so it didn't seem like when you were watching it, like, hey, that got missed. All right, we're only 15 minutes in, but let's check. All right, there's actually a, I call it like a soft warning. There's an error code, but it says KW overload, which we already knew. Um, but everything is still putting out power. I think all that is is basically, if you see on there, see how there's like an 11? Probably if you put out, or you draw more than the 11,000 watts, it gives you that soft load because I mean, the thing hasn't done too much. It's still putting out power. Maybe what we'll do to just take the stress off of it, See, we're learning. Should be below 10 now. Maybe it's just a warning, I don't know, because I know from things I've seen with these generators and others, is like, for example, if you're paralleling and you're not using a switch box, that warning will come up, so gonna send it back to where it was. Engine temperature is fine. Everything's in the green, so. All right, we're a little over an hour and 15 minutes into it. Still got that warning. Running at 217. Everything's still acceptable. The fuel is at 22, 23. I don't know when it starts to pull fuel in. So I'm sitting here looking at the technical manual as I was curious as I thought 20% should have been low enough to activate the external fuel and sure enough was. Um, it says that it will 
activate at 75% and shut off at 100%. So it should have kicked in right away. Um, that means I either have a problem with the switch or the switch is stuck. So I'm just gonna manually fill the tank because that doesn't mean the generator is not gonna be able to complete its test. In my opinion, that's not critical. I can fix that and test it at a later date. So I'm just gonna pull my truck up and fill the tank up. And once I fill it to 100%, it should be able to last. Um, it's not gonna last at this point. Uh, one thing I wanted to do was to shoot some temperatures to see where things are at. Yeah, it's still chugging along, doing what it needs to. I think all the smoke cleared up. Five minutes past the halfway point. It's running about 218 degrees. Everything's doing what it's supposed to. Seems like it's running a little hot, but I mean, it is now 93 degrees. I would assume it's hotter, plus it's sitting right in the sun. And we're running it hot. We're running at 20% above, so. We almost made it through the test. We're at an hour and 35 minutes left. And just a minute or two ago, it shut itself down. Under frequency, obviously it's off. Coolant, high temperature. It's probably, yeah, that coolant temperature is gonna be really high now because it's not circulating. I have the feeling what happened is with this thing sitting right in the sun and basically pushing it 20% over its rated, it probably was slowly creeping up. So what I'm gonna do is I realized what happened to clear the faults before when I was trying, you have to hold this button down. So let's clear that, and then I'm gonna try to restart it. Because it's not gonna cool down until it cycles coolant. All right, well. We can't force it to run right now. Maybe we just need to let it sit here and cool down and I'll come back. Hopefully we didn't blow anything. That would be disappointing after all this work. The overflow bottle is pretty full. Um, definitely over full. And it looks like the overflow did spit out a little bit. I'm surprised it's not spitting out more. Oof, I don't know if it's me, but that battery looks a little swollen too. We're gonna walk away and let this thing sit for a bit. I got my temp gun again. I'm gonna take a temperature reading on that battery. I'm wondering if the batteries are actually overheating a little bit. Cause uh, now that I got it open, I kind of smell like rotten egg smell. I'm wondering if the, the batteries were actually overheating a little bit. Yeah, the batteries are at almost 200 degrees. That's too hot. Cause one thing that I find interesting about the way that this setup on the engine is, is the engine itself doesn't have any sort of fan or anything like that to pull like air through it. I mean, yeah, it's hot out, but I mean, the military rates things to run hotter than this. It's, my watch is saying it's 99 degrees ambient temperature. All right, I decided to cut this video short right here because it was running a little bit too long. I'm gonna make a part four video that is just kind of a conclusion of what I found and what I determined the problem was. So, uh, Thanks for watching and stay tuned.